Under standard two, there is part three, which says that teachers treat students as individuals. And so here, your evidence would be something that illustrates how you do not group students together and stereotype and assume that because they live here or because their parents do this kind of work that the student is going to go in this particular path. So any way that you can illustrate that you have high regard for that student as an individual. Um, it could be in a discussion where you are talking about careers and preparation for careers. So to not make assumptions that this student um, is likely to not go to college simply because you know that the student's family um, economically is not doing well at the time. You want to make sure that you stay open to the possibility that this student very well could go to college and you make that known to the student. Um, you tr so we're never going to make assumptions about a student based on any of those kinds of things, those exterior kinds of indicators that actually mean nothing many times. Um, so that's one of the things that you would want to do. You would want to build that into your lesson plan. Um, when you're talking about careers, to validate that child's experience is another way you treat that child as an individual. So if that child has the experience of, let's just say farming, their family is in farming, and you are doing um, a lesson on careers, to include farming really, really honors that child and that child's family. Um, if another child's, uh, let's say, experience has been growing up in West Virginia and the family being um, in mining, to include that in your discussion on careers opens perspectives and helps other students understand the life of a mining family, the life of a farm family. Uh, many times we tend to choose careers that sort of have glitz, you know, that we just kind of, that are glamorized. And that does not serve students well and it does not honor them. So one of the ways that we can individualize what we do with students and to treat students as individuals is to honor their experiences and their contributions, to invite their parents to the classroom when we are doing um, a lesson on, um, or doing a unit on careers. That in itself is very, very a strong way to honor that student as an individual, to have their parents come in and share what they do with the class. So any way that you can um, illustrate that you are a appreciative of the differences in your students and that you value the contributions that those students and their families make to the community and to our state, to our country, to our world. Those are ways that you should, are treating um, students as individuals. Any ways that you can illustrate that you are um, building positive, uh, appropriate kinds of relationships with children as individuals. Um, let's just say you know that a student plays baseball and you go to one of their games. That is a great example of honoring this student and seeing this student as an individual. When you're teaching math, if you can do an illustration connecting math to baseball, um, that is another way that you do it. And sometimes students will just look up like, how did you know? But that's such a, a great moment for a student to see that you are linking what you're teaching to their lives. And that makes them feel very honored. And that's what is ex asked of you as a teacher who is treating a student as an individual.